So can AI read your mind? This is a topic that I thought was genuinely science fiction, but according to recent research papers, not only from Mark Zuckerberg's Meta and many other esteemed researchers, we are now seeing that this is a true possibility. AI does have the ability to read your mind, but we're going to, of course, break that down because some things aren't what they seem and some things are a little bit scarier than they seem. So I just want to state that the narrative of this video isn't one of the Terminator 1 where AIs manage to point a laser beam at our forehead and then instantly read our minds. It's more so about the technology of AI and what the future could be like if this technology continues to develop at that significant pace. So what I first want to talk about was the research paper that was actually released a couple of months ago and then later in the video i'm going to talk about meta's research paper which was literally just released a couple of days ago and show you just how far things have truly come and exactly what the future of this ai development space is going to look like so what we're looking at right here is mind video okay this is cinematic mindscapes high quality video reconstruction from brain activity we propose mind video, which progressively learns the spatio-temporal information from continuous fMRI data through masked brain modeling and multimodal contrastive learning, and spatio-temporal attention and co-training with an augmented stable diffusion model that incorporates network temporal inflation. So I know that this is a bunch of jargon to most people, but essentially what they're able to do is they're able to reconstruct videos based on the fMRI data. Now, of course, what you can see on this webpage is something truly interesting. What we can see right here is what we have the ground truth videos, and then of course, we have the reconstructed videos. So on the left-hand side, this is essentially what the person who is being shown the images is seeing, okay? So this is the real true video that the person is seeing. Then of course, on the right-hand side, we have the reconstructed videos, based on the fMRI data. So one of the first concerning questions that I asked when I was looking at this research paper and the data around this is what is that fMRI data and how do they capture this in order to be able to reconstruct these videos? Because as someone who wants to learn more and more about AI research, it's concerning when you hear AI can now read our mind if they get some data from us. So how do they get fMRI data? So for those of you who are concerned, an fMRI scan essentially is one that measures brain activity by detecting changes associated with the blood flow. This technique relies on the fact that cerebral blood flow and neuron activity are coupled. Now, understand that you do need to go into one of those machines so it's not just something where someone can do a little zap to the forehead like i stated before you will need to of course give your consent to be put underneath the machine in order for them to scan your brain now a normal mri of the brain can last between 20 to 30 minutes while an fmri lasts between 40 to 55 minutes so all in all an fmri scan generally takes up to an hour and it may take a little longer if your provider wants to connect additional law scans to be sure that they have enough data to analyze or if they want to run another type of MRI scan along an fMRI. So the point we're trying to make here is that this is something that is of course not particularly invasive in the sense that governments are going to be able to just simply understand what everybody is thinking because that is largely people's concerns. Now what we can see here is we can see that the reconstructed videos from the ground truth videos are quite groundbreaking. Now, you have to understand that although it might not look 100% accurate, I think it's accurate enough in order for us to get the message from whatever the ground truth video may be. So what we're seeing is that although this technique has evolved and although it's gotten better, it might not be the very best, but we can still gain the truth from this reconstructed video. So even though what we're seeing on the right hand side might not be an accurate complete representation in terms of color and data, we're still able to get a general message. And that's why this is so important because of course, as you know, technology is continuing to increase, it's continuing to be developed, and there are constantly new research papers being developed that show us new strategies to gain deeper understandings and more efficient ways of doing this technology. Now, if you guys wanna know about the actual developmental stages that this has gone through, you can also see on the left-hand side, we have the different years and essentially the same sort of benchmark. So these early images from 2018, we could all see 
it's just simply blobs in 2022 we can also see that whatever image is being displayed here whatever data we are seeing here isn't actually visible and we aren't able to decipher anything from this however as soon as we bump up to 2023 we can immediately see that there is that leap in ability and the possibility to understand exactly what our subject matter was seeing simply based on that fmri data now this wasn't the only paper that talked about decoding images from brain activity there was another paper from meta which was released around a week ago that was a three minute read and they spoke about decoding real-time images from brain activity. Now, they use a different method. They use MEG scans, a non-invasive neuroimaging technique in which thousands of brain activity measurements are taken per second. So it says, we showcase an AI system capable of decoding the unfolding of visual representations in the brain with an unprecedented temporal resolution. Now, if you want to know how these MEG scans work, essentially, these are methods where they want to measure the changes in the brain's magnetic and electrical field. So these scans allow them to track the timing of each brain activity to a precision of around 10 milliseconds. This very high resolution measurement of the timing of brain activity can be used to understand normal processes in the brain and how things might go wrong in diseases such as Alzheimer's disease. Now, during the MEG scans, people usually are given a task to do and brain activity is measured whilst the person does that task. In addition, a special cap is also worn, which contains electrodes that measures the brain's electrical activity. So what we can see from Meta's paper here is an image shown, which is viewed for one second. And then of course, we have the decoded output on the right hand side. Now, once again, this shows us that we are approaching that turning point into which the data from these fMRI scans or these MEG scans is going to be at sufficient quality for us to eventually completely understand what was seen. Now, if you want to know the difference between the fMRI scans in the previous paper and this one, Meta actually do talk about this too. They say that the functional alignment between such AI systems and the brain can then be used to guide the generation of an image similar to what the participants see in the scanner. While our results show that images are better decoded with fMRI scans, our MEG decoder can be used at every instant of time and thus produce a continuous flux of images decoded from brain activity. Basically saying that this one's instant, whereas their one takes a bit more time. Now, you can also see that these images are far more accurate than the previous paper, which goes to show that this is quite interesting. Now, the applications for this, I don't think are quite draconian, as many people may think that they are, but I definitely believe that they're definitely going to help a ton of people in many different circumstances with many different disabilities. Now, why are these kinds of papers truly important and why are these developments really important to talk about? So if we look at this article here, it says AI advancements and advancements in neurotechnology have led to life changing applications for individuals with physical disabilities. On Yahoo, we can see that mind over paralysis, AI helps quadriplegic man move and feel again. In the astounding medical first, researchers have used an AI powered brain implants to restore movement and sensation for a man who was paralyzed from the chest down. Keith Thomas, 45, became a quadriplegic after a tragic diving accident. But thanks to pioneering work by scientists at Northwell's Health Feinstein Institute, Thomas can now move his arm by simply thinking about it. Even more, he can feel the touch of a hand for the first time in three years. So essentially what they did was the surgeons implanted microchips into his brain in the regions that control movement and touch sensation in the hand. The chip interfaces with AI algorithms that relink his brain to his body and spinal cord, interpreting his thoughts and translating them into actions. So when he thinks about moving his arm, the signals from the brain activate a set of electrode patches in his spine and arm muscles to stimulate the movement. And then tiny sensors on his fingers send the touch information back to his brain to recreate the feeling. So it's a bi-directional mind machine link that bypasses his spinal injury. This is a game changer. Lead researcher Chad Bouton said in an article published by Northwell Help, our goal is to one day give people hope with paralysis, the ability to live fuller, independent lives. So like we stated, 
this is where the applications do arise and later on in the video we're going to talk about how these applications have truly changed some people's lives i do know that there is the fear that once this becomes completely insane and i do know that once this technology is completely perfected and we do somehow with advanced algorithms and interpretations manage to get the brain signals decoded word for word or to a very precise output that many people are going to be quite afraid but i don't think that that's where this technology is headed at all take out so take a look at this ted talk by nita hopefully i don't have to remove this clip due to copyright but this person describes their experience with this technology and how its advancements have actually helped them in some very interesting scenarios and it seems as if this technology is just increasing humans capabilities to deal with the many problems that life will throw at us so take a look at this because i think it's gonna show you all what this technology is capable of of associations instead if i had had decnef available to me at the time I might have overcome my PTSD more quickly without having to relive every sound, terror, and smell in order to do so. I'm not the only one. Sarah described herself as being at the end of her life, no longer in a life worth living because of her severe and intractable depression. Then, using implanted brain sensors that reset her brain activity like a pacemaker for the brain, Sarah reclaimed her will to live. While implanted neurotechnology advances have been extraordinary, it's the everyday brain sensors that are embedded in our ordinary technology that I believe will impact the majority of our lives. Like the one-third of adults and nearly one-quarter of children who are living with epilepsy for whom conventional anti-seizure medications fail. Now, Researchers from Israel to Spain have developed brain sensors using the power of AI in pattern recognition and consumer electroencephalography to enable the detection of epileptic seizures minutes to up to an hour before they occur, sending potentially life-saving alerts to a mobile device. Regular use of brain sensors could even enable us to detect the earliest stages of the most aggressive forms of brain tumors like glioblastoma, where early detection is crucial to saving lives. The same could hold true for Parkinson's disease to Alzheimer's, traumatic brain injury, ADHD, and even depression. So now... You can clearly see that from this talk, Nita has described the countless abilities and possibilities that this technology is going to bring about. AI, of course, has disrupted many industries and the ability to reset the brain with implants to lead a more positive life is definitely something that I didn't see coming. Now, whether or not this is going to be accepted by the wider community as brain implants are widely regarded as something that is far too invasive and quite dystopian. But of course, as you know, with techno optimists like Elon Musk, we are seeing a wider acceptance of this into society. So if you don't know, Elon Musk is working on a company called Neuralink. And essentially, this is going to be the brain computer interface to where we're going to have that connection with these large language models with these ai models to be able to interact with our brain in a completely different way now currently Neuralink is allegedly in human trials and i do believe that this is the future i mean if people do have these health issues to where it's likely going to be solved with this ai slash human connection i believe that if this solution is the only possibility then albeit but I don't believe that we should be concerned with governments forcing us to have these implants into our heads as although the future may sometimes look bleak and very depressing, we do have to remain optimistic as technology improves, overall society and life expectancy does improve. So you can see right here on the 19th of September 2023, Neuralink's first inhuman clinical trial is open for recruitment. We're, we're happy to announce that we've received approval from the Reviewing Independent Institutional Review Board and our first hospital site to begin recruitment for our first inhuman clinical trial. During the study, the R1 robot will be used to surgically place the N1 implants, ultra fine and flexible threads in a region of the brain that controls movement intention. Once in place, the N1 implant is cosmetically invisible and is intended to record and transmit brain signals wirelessly to an app that decodes movement intention. The initial goal of our BCI is to grant people the ability to control a computer cursor or a keyboard using their thoughts alone. 
Now, although that does sound crazy, this is something that Neuralink did achieve before. So two years ago, Neuralink released this video in which we have a monkey that learned to play Pong with its thoughts. So initially what they had was they had a monkey that was using a little GoPro stick, of course, with a Neuralink chip implanted in its head. And then of course, they disconnected the stick from the machine and we saw that the monkey was still able to guide this cursor to this orange box in order to get the reward. Definitely a fascinating moment. And additionally, the monkey was able to learn to play Pong for a banana reward. Now, if you think this isn't crazy, I'm not sure what is going to wow you because this definitely shows us just how crazy this technology is going to be. And with the recent advancements in AI being able to decode stuff, I think that this technology is quite promising. Now, with human trials, there is, of course, always a long testing phase, and we always do want to ensure that people that do implants and other things to their body are going to remain relatively safe because what we've seen time and time again is that the long-term consequences of anything that we put in our bodies sometimes isn't seen for the first couple of years. So I'm not sure how long this testing phase is going to be before these chips are going to be rolled out en masse. In addition, the ability for AI to decode brain activity isn't just limited to images and movement. Researchers played Pink Floyd's Another Brick Wall Part 1 to patients recording the brain's electrical activity. The objective was to reconstruct what the patients were hearing and after extensive analysis, researchers succeeded in reconstructing recognizable parts of the song, showcasing how the brain processes musical elements of speech or prosody. This groundbreaking study offers hope for advancing communication aids for those with speech impediments. So overall, I do think that this technology is on the rise and it is one of the more interesting technologies because it is still very early. I am eager to see what the first human clinical trials of Neuralink show us and if there are any other innovative companies who are going to be taking on this monumental challenge.